I'm Evelyn Dick, President of Vine Ministry. Vine Ministry also has a board of directors of 11 uh, persons. We also have staff in Haiti of Pastor Joel St. Amour, who is the pastor of the Vine Church. We pastored in the Church of the Brethren for 26 years. Toward the end of that 26 years, Leroy was uh, called to Haiti and as well as I was. And uh, we have been 24 years. Leroy and I were in Haiti. And at that point, Leroy passed away. And I still am continuing the ministry. When we first went to Haiti, we went with another organization. Our first um, project was to do literacy. And for three years, we did a literacy program all over the country of Haiti. It was a good lesson for us to learn to know the country. Following that, we were invited by a, still another mission to begin a Bible school. We established Hope Academy in 1984, and it is still in progress. The academy is still going on. In 1989, we developed our own ministry, which is called Vine Ministry, as most of you know it today. We then decided that we would begin a church in Port-au-Prince and that we decided that we would do gardening, rooftop gardening, and by necessity we began a child sponsorship program. There were three children in one family who could not go to school because they didn't have the money and that was the very beginning of it. The beginning of the church was in a banana grove. We had about 15 people that met at a home of, of uh, some friends, Haitian friends, and that is how the church began. We, we began with six um, cell groups around the city of Port-au-Prince. In 1992, after having cell group meetings in homes for three years, we came together in a church in downtown Port-au-Prince. It was actually a storefront that we rented and it was right on the main drag with lots of noise, lots of uh, people going by. And uh, for 14 years, we worshiped in that church. It was filled to capacity every Sunday. We were overflowing. People would sit wherever they could. Sometimes they would sit three on two chairs in order to be able to get in there. I would say that it comfortably seated 100, but uh, actually, we had about 225 in there. So in June of 2004, we purchased land in downtown Port-au-Prince, not very far from where the original church is, and we began to clear land to build a church. Now this church is to be able to seat 1,000 people or Pastor Joel says a thousand Haitians or 700 Americans because you know we Americans like our space. Anyway, um, it's a large church. We purchased a piece of land that I can't tell you the dimensions. However, we used just about every bit of the land. There's no outside to speak of and the church covers the whole space. On the first floor of the church we have um, offices for the pastor, for a secretary. We have children's church, a big room for children's church, and um, bathrooms, which are important. There will be a kitchen. Um, and then on the second floor is the sanctuary. The sanctuary has its own baptistry in which uh, this past July 7, there were 24 people baptized and uh, we also have a balcony. As I speak, the roof is going on to the new church building and should be completed actually by today. This church has been the vision of Leroy for quite a few years and as time went by uh, we were able to purchase the land and to uh, begin to build the church. The purpose of it is to bring the gospel to the people of Haiti. There's so much voodoo there, so much um, uh, devil worship um, that these people need to hear the gospel. And very many of them are very hungry to hear it. 
our church today, the, the downstairs of the church is packed out every Sunday. Pastor Joel told me just recently they had their annual convention or conference, whatever we would like to call it, uh, preaching every night for a week and every night the church was packed out. This church is, I'm sure, it's going to have a great impact on the community, on the people that live in the neighborhood, and reach out all over the country of Haiti and even into other countries. In the school sponsorship, uh, Pastor Joelle's wife is very helpful because she knows the students and the, the uh, parents of these students actually much better than I do. Our goal is that every child in Vine Church goes to school. That's number one. If every child in Vine Church is supported, then we will reach out into the community and support some of the community children. Now that doesn't mean that we support every child in Vine Church, but we do support those who don't have the money to be able to go to school. Our registration is a very busy time. We have each child has to come to the church to be registered. We fill out forms for them, uh, listing their name, uh, birth dates, where they live, where they go to church. Every child, when they first come to be registered the very first time, must bring a birth certificate. This is very important because actually some of the people in Haiti don't know when they were born. But this lets us know the date, how old they are, and so forth. Now, we sponsor as many children as we have sponsors for. Child support is not a budgeted item. So if I have 10 supporters, I support 10 children. If I have 50, I support 50 children. This uh, year that is just about to be finished, uh, we have 97 children supported. And each year it has grown. We have never uh, lost sponsors. We have always gained sponsors. And the cost for sponsoring a child is $25 a month, which can be sent into the Vine Ministry Office by the month, by the quarter, uh, one uh, lump sum, any way that it's convenient for the support supporter to send it. The benefits of supporting children in school is that in Haiti, you don't go to school if you don't have the money. There aren't public schools. That's the reason that we began this program. And each child comes to the school to be registered uh, at the beginning of the school year. And Vine Ministry supporters supply for them their uniforms, shoes, registration fees, all of the necessary things that are needed for them to go to school. Now sometimes if the, there's enough money for their school and there's some left over, it can go to the family for food or for medical needs, something of that nature. Uh, we try to treat into each person individually so that uh, we try to meet their needs as much as possible. We actually had one little girl who was very malnourished one year. Her arms were just about like that when she came in. And we knew that she couldn't learn anything because she was too hungry and malnourished. Therefore, we uh, arranged for her to go to a doctor. We arranged for food for her and also for the family. And uh, today that little girl is flourishing. She's going to school, a happy little kid.